The next item says cash paid for other expenses. So according to the formula, this is other operating expenses. And there's usually a certain amount of confusion about this particular formula because it says operating expenses, but really it's other operating expenses. So on my income statement, under operating expenses, other expenses, 365000 So I'm going to write that down here for my calculation, 365000 Now, according to the formula, I'm going to take a look at my prepaid expenses. So on my balance sheet, prepaid expenses, it used to be 17500 it went down to 14000 Well, that's a difference there of about $3,500. And that's a decrease. So according to the formula, a decrease in prepaids should be negative. So that'll be a negative 3500 Now the other part of the formula says accruals. I want to make sure to see if I have any accruals. Well, on my balance sheet, I see assets, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and so forth. I've got equipment. I've got liabilities. I don't see any accruals. So that shows you that you don't necessarily always use every single part of the formula, only if the company happens to have that item. So this company doesn't have any accruals. So I'll just go with what I have right here. So that is 361500 but again, that will be a negative because this is cash paid. So that takes care of that item. Then we have one more before we actually get the total. Cash paid for income taxes. I've got a formula down here for cash paid for taxes. Now notice I also had a formula for cash paid for interest. Apparently this company doesn't have any interest. So again, you're not going to necessarily have to use every formula, but you have every formula there in case you need it. Now on cash paid for taxes, tax expense is the starting point. So down on my income statement, where's my income taxes? Right here, income taxes, $22,000. So that's their tax expense, $22,000. Now, according to the formula, we then have to look for any taxes payable. I'm going to look at my balance sheet. Down here are my liabilities. I see accounts payable. I see notes payable. Don't actually see any taxes payable. So that means I can just go with the number that I already have, which is the 22000 But again, that will be a negative 22000 because remember, any of these titles that say cash paid, it's going to be a negative number. So now I'm ready to net all four of these items. And that's going to give me my net cash provided by the operating activities. And that works out to 829200 So that completes at least the direct method version of the statement of cash flows. Now, once I have completed that, it's a good idea to double check to make sure that everything is correct. How can we do that? Well, I said that number right there, the net increase in cash, was going to be my check figure. So what I want to do is take my three main numbers that I have here from my three activities. I've got operating activities, investing, and financing, those three main numbers. And I want to net those together. What do I end up with? 815200 So everything's correct on this direct method statement of cash flows. Now that's one way to do the statement of cash flows. We also have another method and it's called the indirect method. Now on this version we've already completed quite a bit but we still have to do that top section on operating activities. This one is set up in a different manner. It says cash flows from operating activities. You start off with net income. So they want me to plug in the net income. Well, that'll be on my income statement, probably the last thing on it. So down here on my income statement, the bottom line is the net income. 
Well, they had a net income of $824,500. So I'll go over here and plug that in. $824,500. Then they're going to ask me for a whole series of items here, different adjustments. This says decrease in accounts receivable. Well, how much did my accounts receivable decrease? Well, right here was my accounts receivable. Remember, it went from 83200 down to 75000 That was an $8,200 difference. So I'm going to plug in 8200 Now, how do I remember that it was 8200 Well, think about this. I already calculated that difference right there. That was my accounts receivable, 8200 Then it wants to know the decrease in merchandise inventory. Well, that went from 265 down to 242 so that was a pretty big difference. How much of a difference? Well, that was right here. That was that $23,000. So that's going to be $23,000. Then they want to know my decrease in prepaid expenses. That's an easy one. $17,500 down to fourteen. That was a $3,500 difference. Then they want to know my decrease in accounts payable. Well, that was down here. That was 96000 and it went down to 17500 That was the difference of 78500 And also, that number is located right here. That was my decrease in accounts payable. Then they want to know my depreciation expense. Well, that would be on my income statement. Right there it is. Depreciation expense, 47000 then they want to know the loss. What kind of a loss did they have? Well, that would also be on the income statement. Right there it is. Loss on sale of equipment, $1,500. So that'll be $1,500, but notice I'm using the absolute value. So that answers all these items here. But what I don't know is, of these items, which ones need to be positive and which ones need to be negative? To figure that out, I'm going to look at my formulas. Now, I have a different set of formulas down here for the indirect method. According to indirect method, we first begin with net income, and then we have a series of adjustments. Now, the first two go together. It says add a decrease in non-cash current assets, subtract increase in non-cash current assets. Well, all my non-cash current assets, they all happen to be decreases. Because look at this. Accounts receivable was a decrease. Merchandise inventory was a decrease. And prepaid expenses. So all my non-cash assets were decreases. So it says a decrease, according to this formula, would be added. So that means I'll just leave these three numbers as positive numbers. Then it says current liabilities. If there was an increase, that will be added. If there was a decrease, that will be subtracted. Well, I had accounts payable. My accounts payable was a decrease in accounts payable. So it says a decrease in the current liabilities should be subtracted. So I want to make that negative. Negative 78,500. Then the next two formulas. It says add expenses with no cash outflow, subtract revenue with no cash inflow. Well, in this case, we've got depreciation expense. Remember, depreciation expense is not paid to anyone. So I want to add that back. So I'll just leave that as a positive. And then the last two formulas have to do with gains and losses. Now remember, gains and losses are not actual gains and losses. They're just gains and losses of value on paper. So I have to treat them the opposite way on the statement of cash flows. Losses would be added and gains would be subtracted. Well, since this is a loss, I'll just leave that as a positive number. Now I'm ready to go up here and grab all these items. And a couple different ways I could do this. Really the easiest way is to just add all of them together or net all of them together. 
and the number that I get is 829,200. Now that should be a familiar number. Go back and look at this version of the statement. Again, we got 829,200. See how it's the same? So that shows you that regardless of the method that you decide to use, you'll still get the same answer either way. Now the key to doing this really is just being very methodical, pay a close attention to your formulas, use your information that you're given, and the main thing is pay attention to those positive and negative signs. And if you're in doubt about what you've done, double check it. Again, I could perform that same check on this version of the statement. You know, 829,200 plus 6,000 minus 20,000, that does equal 815,200. So always double check to make sure that it's right. So that completes the indirect method, and that completes this example on the statement of cash flows.